Welcome to the first Whiny Wednesday of 2017. Happy New Year's to everyone. I think I have a great topic for a dart related resolution, which is how to break through a skill plateau or weight loss plateau. You're probably confused by the title of this video because you're wondering what weight loss has to do with improving your game, right? They actually have so much in common, boiling down to the simple fact that our bodies and minds are resistant to change. I've seen so many players reach this kind of plateau and just throw up their hands in the air and say, I quit and I've seen hundreds of people give up on achieving their goal weight. So I'm gonna delve into the dynamics of a skill plateau and talk about the five steps that worked for me to overcome it. Step number one, stop checking your rating on a daily basis. The unpredictability of what is going on in your daily life is going to drive you nuts. Thinking about your rating during a game will affect your strategy, your confidence, your overall ability to perform because suddenly there's double the amount of anxiety about missing. The best thing I ever did for myself was only check my rating once per week to see my overall improvement. And weight loss is the exact same thing. Every true expert out there will advise you to check your weight once per week at the same time. Because the fluctuation of water retention will trip you out on a daily basis. And checking your weight multiple times a day and different times each day is the fastest way to destroy your confidence and mess with your head. Step two, try not to have anxiety about missing. This is what I think is the number one reason why people eventually quit when they hit a plateau because it's no longer fun to even play darts. When I was going through my plateau, I thought that I was going to miss before even approaching the line. And I was so worried about missing that I had complete anxiety about throwing in general in any game. And that was miserable because this is a game that I love and suddenly my joy and confidence just was completely erased because of the fear of missing. <laughs> fear of not living up to or pushing past my current base level of skill. But my good friend Brian suggested something to me one day. You guys know Brian, he taught me how to play darts and he's my form coach. We play that mouthwash game against each other sometimes, you know, Brian. Uh, the genius that he is suggested that I start thinking black and white. You're either going to hit or miss and nothing else matters. So he said you better miss with all of the confidence in the world because then the dart feels good during your release impact and you are significantly better able to pinpoint it down to one thing that you can change to hit with your next dart. This ties into step three, identify what your bad habits are and try something new to eradicate them. Don't just accept them. Step number four, re-evaluate your practice routine. The better you get, the harder it becomes for your practice routine to challenge your body and your mind. Same thing with weight loss. As you lose weight, not only does it become harder to lose, but your metabolism decreases, so you have to re-evaluate your caloric intake. You can't keep eating the same things just as you can't keep practicing the same routine. You need to start practicing high outs and clutch closes, even corking. Stick a dart in the bullseye somewhere and try to shoot through it to beat it. And do the same for triples. Practice fitting darts into the segment with obstacles in the way. You're never gonna get to a higher level if you don't practice pulling off great performances at home. Step number five, only change one part of your mechanics at a time. This is a normal part of the change process and every darter has to go through this in order to get better. It's simply overwhelming to be working on five different things at once. You gotta change one thing that is your worst habit and develop it to the point where it's manageable then change another thing. It takes an incredible amount of patience to actually break through and push past a plateau. A lot of people don't have the patience to do it, and they're unwilling to change anything about their mechanics or mentality to get better, or they let performance anxiety get the best of them, and the fear of failure is just overwhelming. So you have to give yourself credit for how hard you work to get to that point and give yourself enough time to actually get better, because Progress is going to slow down, but that's okay. Then you're working at just getting a fraction closer to your goals. That's all that I have for you guys. Thanks for watching the first Wani Wednesday of 2017. And because of popular demand, Jeff, Lisa, and I have decided that we are gonna do a drunken Wani Wednesday once a month, special segment. The content probably won't be that great, but at least the humor will be on point. So look out for that. I gotta go buy a poncho for the next time I jump in the bed with them because I'm not spilling my wine next time. I can't guarantee it, but I'm really gonna try not to. <laughs> Everyone have a great year. I hope this was helpful to at least a handful of people out there uh, that shared the same kind of anxiety that I felt last year. All right, thanks for watching everyone.
con to playing with Jeff is that every once in a while he'll get into a fuck where he'll his I can't even talk right now. Shit is killing me with this. Yeah, you know, you're just like fucking. I, mean, I know she likes pink holes and all, but there are two things in the world that should be pink. The number one is flowers. Then you can guess what the second one is. Funk, because he's a 17. He's known to shoot well. That's for damn sure. It is also hard to play as a high rated player. It's hard to play with me. <laughs> no, it's not hard to play with you. That's easy. <laughs> As a couple, it's great. Your chest hair is just popping. It's always popping. 